Peter will be only candidate canvassing pan Nigerian ideal Labour Party chieftain says. A chieftain of the Labour Party, Chris Mokobia, has boasted that the presidential candidate of the party remains the only one among the contenders for the 2023 election who is not driven by ethnic sentiments. And that is true. The only candidate who has in every thought and respect canvassed a pan-Nigerian ideal is Peter Gregory Obi. And oftentimes, when I look at what people say, the question is, why always Obi? Hmm. And that question has still not been answered. I tell you, when this flooding thing started, people wondered why he started his visit from the North Central before he went to the South South and the South East. And the same people who accused him of being a regional candidate said, oh, why would he go to the North first? Why would he go to the South South? And why not Anambra State? He went to Anambra after he had visited the North and the South South because simply the challenge of a nation is beyond the propriety of ethnocentric sentiment. It is about empathy, passion, commitment, and love for a nation that desires a leader who cares, who has a deep commitment to a progressive nation and the only candidate in the, in the uh, amphitheater is Peter Gregory Obi Mokobia said on channels television Sunrise Daily on Monday. So while responding further to the claim from other camps that his candidate is a regional candidate, the member of Obi Dati Campaign Council said it is the other candidates who rather run their campaign based on ethnocentric and regional sentiment, insisting that Obi is the only one who said that he should only be voted based on his capacity to lead. I will say this, you know the candidate of APC, you know the Emilio philosophy, you know the article and how the North would need a Northern president who is a pan-Nigerian and then you see other candidates who are talking about the ethnocentric and regional biases, but Obi is the only candidate who has come and said something clearly. He said, do not vote for me because I am Igbo. Vote for me because of my competency and my capacity. Vote for me because of my passion and my understanding of the urgency of now, Mokobia said. Hmm. This is a very good one. Mokobia, the chieftain of the Labour Party, is trying to let people understand that Obi is the only candidate right now that is void of ethnic sentiment, void of religious sentiment, void of personal interest right now. He, his interest now is to make Nigeria the ideal country for everyone. All right? And a few examples have been cited here, like during the flood, the flood ravaged from northeast to, to down to the southeast and south south, but he rather went to the northeast first and then came down to some other middle bed areas before coming to his own uh, Igbo area to, to, to felicitate with them, to see, you know, to, to, to share his thoughts with them. All right? So, so, why did he do that? He wants to prove to Nigerians that he is not ethnocentric. He is somebody that wants the interest of an ID nation, the interest of Nigeria at heart, all right? So, so he has proven that. We've heard of uh, the Emilio of Lagos State, the Jagaban. He said, this Emilio is my turn, it's our turn, all right? And we've also seen how Femi Fanekaide has been going to challenge the Feni Fere for supporting Obi, now, Afeni Fere has two factions, one faction under Padevanjo and one other, on, one other uh, under Pa Fasuranti. All right? And we understand how um, Fanny Kaode went to them to tell them that they cannot abandon Tinubu at a time like this, that if a defeat of Tinubu is a defeat to entire Yoruba state. Is that not ethnocentric? 
Is that not advocating tribal politics? It, 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 how, how do you think such person will benefit the entire Nigeria? All right? And we've also heard how Atiku told the Northerners that they don't need an Igbo or Yoruba president. They need him, Atiku, as a Northerner. So why would Atiku say that if he actually has the interest of the entire Nigeria at heart? And it's on record. He has not refuted it. He said it. Obi is the only candidate that has not put the interest of Igbo at heart first. He's talking about Nigeria. He's saying Nigeria has rotted so much that even our generation and generation after our generation would not have a country to call their own. And something has to be done differently now to, you know, to turn the country away from complete destruction and collapse. He is the only person that has not, that, uh, you know, displayed ethnocentric behavior. You understand? And people are still looking for a way because he's more genuine in his intentions towards the, the, the recovery and development of Nigeria. What is presented, the words he has, the wisdom in his head, others don't have it. And that is why they tactically avoided the presidential debate that was organized by Arise TV because they, can't, they won't be able to face him. The, the, the way he's going to present issues, the rest will not present issues. And that is why rather than attacking the issues facing Nigeria, they're attacking Peter Obi's personality. It doesn't work. And even at that, they still don't have anything to hold him. Up to now, there is still nothing in his baggage. He doesn't have any baggage to offload from his head. The Emilio has a lot of baggage to offload from his head. The, the, the Articles also has a lot of baggage in his head to be offloaded. They have not offloaded them. And as he carrying them about, she canvassing that people should vote them with all those baggages. It won't work. I don't see how that will work. They need to answer all, you know, provide answer to all the questions that have been thrown to them about their persons, about their wealth, and about their character. You understand? So, and that is why Peter Obi is still excelling because nothing, nothing. And that is why he wrote the other day why EFCC has not invited him. Because there's nothing to investigate. There's nothing to be found. Today, I know there are cases against uh, Tinubu before the, 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 the AFCC to explain how he got his wealth, to explain so many things. We know how uh, Atiku, especially even under Ambassador, was investigated by the U.S. government. All right? And all of that, even in Nigeria, he's only in Nigeria here that people scot through the law and go scot free. Meanwhile, the judiciary and the law enforcement agent will go after petty thieves on the street, leaving the big ones in the political system to move freely on the streets of Nigeria. It's unfortunate. So now, let's see some comments from somebody here. Somebody said, I agree with you 100%, my brother. But beyond that assertion, let's do all in our capacity to mobilize for his enthronement. That is for Peter Obi's enthronement. Even when we are not recognized by people, posterity will reward us in due course. If possible, let's sell all we have, all right, to enthrone him as the next president. I am not an Igbo man, neither am I a card-carrying party member, but patriotic Nigerian who passionately believe in the realization of a new Nigeria. This is a very good statement from somebody. Another is making another comment here. Peter Obi is the only candidate that is real, honest to fix Nigeria. Others lack passion, just ambition and fame, especially the Tinubus. You see? And we know that, that Tinubu and Atiku, their, their drive, their desperation, is just to register their name in the history of Nigeria as one-time Nigerian president. That is just all. They really don't have anything to offer. And they will never offer anything. Rather, they will even rip Nigeria apart. And they will take more from the coffers of Nigeria to themselves. Sure, it will happen. So people already know them by their president, by their antecedents, and by everything before and after them. People know them. All right? And another person is saying here, that is true. Even to the blind, it is only by God's insane and those from the lineage of Esau that will feel otherwise because of their stomach. Wow. The lineage of Esau. <laughs> the lineage of Esau. We understand the story of Esau and Jacob. How Esau 
sold his birthright to Jacob for a pot of porridge because of hunger. Mm, stomach infrastructure. And that is exactly what people are doing. People are not now, but they've been doing it. People have been selling their destiny, selling their birthright just for a bag of rice or even a cup of rice or a rubber of rice with granite oil and onions on top. That has been happen happening repeatedly every four years in this country. And some people are still not tired of that. Some are destined to be Esau for life. And they will remain Esau. Why the Jacobs will continue to find a way to better their destiny? That is it. So, please, let's be wise. Let's forget about the Esau syndrome. Be sorry, the Esau. The Esau syndrome is actually what is happening in Nigeria to so many people. And the politicians already know. And that is what they want to capitalize on this time around. I call it Esau syndrome. You know, the syndrome of selling your birthright for a pot of porridge because of hunger. And that is why the politicians will continue to keep Nigerians impoverished so that they can remain captivated under them. And then they can be selling, giving them peanuts, a tip of the iceberg to feed their stomach and then collect their votes as, from their, as their birthright and then continue moving. That will change this year. That narrative will change this year. And so let us vote widely. Let us try to avoid the ASOR syndrome. Thank you for listening. And um, let's continue to support who we should support that we think has all the genuine interest at heart to repair Nigeria. Thank you.